Welcome to Study Spectrum TV channel and I am Aishwarya Soni, your teacher for today and I'll be teaching you a chapter in science and that would be the living organisms and their surroundings. So this chapter is present in the CBSC board of standard 6 and uh, let's proceed further with the objectives that we'll be covering in this chapter. So the objectives are going to be very simple to understand about living organisms and the surroundings around them and uh, what are the different types of surroundings as the topic suggests. So let's just cover up with the first part of the objective. We'll carry this thing out with a very simple exercise and that will be a little activity for you to just uh, understand about what, what exactly the surroundings are and what what type of organisms are present in these surroundings? Now, organisms may range from grass, from plants, from uh, the various animals, from the various uh, surrounding, the, the minutest of the minutest living organism that you see in these areas. So, what you need to do is now for this is that you need to open up your photograph albums. In that, you will. I'm very sure that all of us have gone for various vacations over the while as we've been growing up. Some of them might go to, uh, you say, foreign countries, either some of them will be visiting India, some of you might have visited somewhere else. So, one thing you all might have had observed in very common, and that would be about the diversity around us. So, while just observing about how things are how things are are viewed by you so you definitely might have had observed that there's a lot of diversity around us and this diversity includes various animals includes various plants includes the various type of bushes and shrubs and you, even you see the diversity in uh, human beings itself I mean to say by diversity is that not every individual is same one individual will definitely be different from the other and in this way there is diversity in our surroundings also. So we see, di we see various and diverse uh, types of the plants, of animals, for example a dog and a camel. It's not going to be similar, they are very different. So that is the diversity that you see in a dog and a camel. So now let's just come back to the main point. The, what I asked you to do a while ago was to open up your photo album and just go through the pictures of where you had been for vacations. So I'm sure wherever you might have had been, that you might have had observed a lot of types of plants and animals or say species of them to be in a very precise manner. So in this, actually I'll share, share about my experience with you. So I had gone to Rajasthan and we know that it's really hot in Rajasthan and it's really very dry in Rajasthan in the daytime actually. So in the night it gets cooler and uh, for all those who have been to Rajasthan, they will understand that you will see the type of animals like camel over there. The type of plant you will see would be a cactus and the type of soil you'd see over there would be very dry and sandy. So this was about my experience in a dry part. Now I went to the mountain regions also for my vacations. So over there what I observed was it was really cold because uh, the climate was so chilled over there. Then what I observed over there was that the animals like yak and goat had thick fur on them. So the type of trees also I found were to be very different from the type of trees that are found in the dry areas or in the humid areas like Kachita Mumbai itself. You will not find the type of trees in mountain regions the similar to be that are present over here in Mumbai. So the type of trees over there I found were oak, pine and over here we find normal, normal trees like the Ashoka tree or the mango tree or uh, any other rosy shrub or any other plant. So what I observed by my personal experience was that we, I saw a lot of change in the same type, in the same main, main 
uh, kingdom. So supposedly for plant kingdom, I saw the diversity in coral region and as well as the dry region. In the coral region, I saw that they were very spiky and they were very sheathed and very rigid, the trees, the plants. But whereas in dry, dry areas, I found that the, the cactus, for example, I gave you with the help of Rajasthan, was very uh, small, was very thick in structure, and was very fleshy in structure, and was it was not exactly like the kind of trees we see usually. It was very short and very dense and very fleshy. So these basically these changes that I observed proved to me that diversity has been taking place. But uh, why has it been taking place? We'll understand it. Just let's shift to the exercise. So over here in the activity table, I have one column for the type of plants or uh, the type of animals or any other organism we find in forests. So for second one also, on that is on the mountain areas, it's going to be the same. But we are we have to just mention the type of plants or animals or any other living organism that, that we might have had seen when we went for our vacations with our parents or uh, any other place that you might have had seen. For example, you might have had, some people are really found of uh, googling and of surfing online and just viewing and exploring places. So there also we could have had possibly seen it. So what we have to do is, again, in the the column of uh, in the deserts, we again have to mention the plant and the animals or any other organism that we've observed over uh, this column. Following the in the seas or any other region, also we have to mention the same. So in any other region would be the volcanic eruption regions or the extreme regions or extreme places where the temperature is way beyond high uh, or it's really cold and it's very chilly. So the cold example would be the polar regions like the Antarctica. Over there, habitation is uh, very, very rigid and extreme and it becomes very difficult for one individual or any plant or organism to survive for long over there. And that is why we we'll just understand about what adaptations are following by just listing them to the type of plants or animals we have. So in the first column is in the, in the forest. So what would possibly be the type of plants or animals that you'd see there? So in forests, I told you about my experience, about how I've gone to various places. So I had gone to these forest areas, so we know that there are types of forests. But the kind of trees I found over there were the evergreen trees, That was one. These evergreen trees are the one actually that they never. Uh... So evergreen trees are the ones that uh, are found in the forests, and these forests are the one that they never go dry or never have the phase where the leaves are shed. So basically, as the name suggests, these uh, forests or are going to have trees that are going to remain green throughout the year. That is because of the conditions like uh, proper and continuous supply of sunlight, proper supply of water, then rain pouring. So usually in the evergreen trees and the, or the evergreen forests, what happens is there is rain pouring continuously throughout the year and that's why they are so green and so fresh. So the next thing that we observe, now I remember telling you about mentioning any type of plant any type of animal or any type of object now this is a new thing that i added because we need to understand about surroundings and we know surroundings are made up of little little things so we will add about the object also so now we have three categories to fill in that is the plant the animal and any type of object seen in these areas seen in these surroundings so in forest we mentioned about evergreen trees but in objects, what would we observe? We would observe, say, we would observe rocks, 
we would observe soil, moist soil. So we'll write that. In the forest regions, we would observe rocks. We would observe moist soil. So after that, this is just a brief summary that I'm explaining to you. We are just listing out the things we immediately recollect as we have the name forest or uh, any dry area in our head. So from moist soil, it also can relate to various type of uh, the birds. So the birds over here would be another. Now in animals, we can find all type of animal in forests. So we know that we find hippopotamuses, we find lions, we find tigers, we find foxes and all these type of animals in the forest region too. So I'll just note them down. Lions, tigers, foxes. Okay, so I guess this is enough for us to just summarize about uh, what is the type of organisms, objects or uh, any other diverse factor in the section of the forests. Now let's shift to the next section that is on the mountains. So as I told you about my experience personally, it was very chilly on the mountain and I found yaks and I found goats, I found over there pine trees. I found a lot of snow. So these are certain things that I found. So I'll just note them down over here. In animals, I found yaks and goats. And in the trees, I found pine trees, oak trees. These are the type of trees I found over there. So these are pine trees, oak trees, Okay, and uh, the other type of uh, the surrounding that I found over there was that it was it had snow covered up all over it. It was snow clad, so I found a lot of snow on the mountain regions. Okay, now let's shift to the next section. That's the deserts. Now in deserts we have seen a lot of movies. We're fond of Hollywood movies, so we have definitely seen a lot of movies, and there are movies that will have a desert scene definitely in it because Bollywood mainstream drama this is actually. So let's just uh, list about what are the type of surroundings we see in and what are, what are the type of organisms we see over there or objects. So just recollect any any favorite song that you had and had sand in it. So what would you be collecting? You would be recollecting sand because it's desert obviously and even if you, you're not fond of movies, you definitely have studied about deserts. So one factor that we'd be collecting over here would be the sand as an object over there. The next, now what did I explain to you about this? What did I make, share my experience with you? I shared that I saw trees like and plants like cactus over there. So we saw cactuses. Then I also told you that I saw camels over there and camels. So we will first shift to the next column that is in the sea. So what are the type of plants or the objects you find in the sea? Of course you find a lot of water and you find fishes, variety of fishes. So I will just write down the variety of fishes because these variety they range in a very large scale actually it's very diverse then we found about we also we can find various type of plants in the section of the sea so the type of plants that we can find are the sea cucumber the sea weed so these are the type of plants actually i'm just men mentioning them on a very broad spectrum. So sea cucumber, sea weed, then a variety of fishes are the basic things that you will actually find. And you would also find 
the coral reef. Now this coral reef is going to be the one that is going to have a diversity of types of stones and uh, of types of rocks and of the, the floor is going to be really fancy because the coral reef just go on to google uh, just google about the coral reef and you will find how fascinating it is so in coral reef we'll have all the uh, we need one minute i'll just note down coral reef for you so coral reef is going to have all the fancy the fancy type of rocks and the uh, fancy type of the flooring that just touches down to the sea and it's very uh, fascinating to actually observe and watch it so let's just shift to the last section that is any other In no more spending your energy and money on coaching classes or missing classes for rain for rally and any other nonsense subjects covered by multiple teachers with repeat telecast doubts concepts applications no problem all explained through great and significant animation so sit back comfortably in your home and watch study spectrum tv channel or the polar regions so actually a study is conducted about every living species or living organism or any other object on this planet and it is understood that by the studies that were carried out it was understood that there are these organisms tiny little organisms that are found on the surface of the volcanic eruption mountains or even in the polar regions so these are uh, tiny little organisms are nothing but the microorganisms so you can find in any other place you can find microorganisms now that we just understood from this table that there is no place that does not have any organism or any living organism in it for a matter of fact if you just open up your cupboard you definitely are going to find some kind of the uh, organism just like ant or a spider or a pillar or something crawling out of your cupboard so just imagine that there, there are organisms in your cupboard too so there's no place that is not left without any organism on it not even the remote the remote interiors of any place or not even the exteriors of any place there are, there is organism and there is life everywhere around us so the main concern from this table that we learned was just to list about the various type of organisms that will be present in the living system in the living societies and uh, to understand about themselves and to understand about more about them so what are we going to do now is we will compare the two extreme situations so over here on this chart activity I think that uh, the desert and the sea are two really drastically different and way apart fields uh, and areas. So, what we we just start to compare them. Now, what we found over here was in desert we have sands, but in the seas we know sea have water. We have visited various beaches when we were as kids. So, I'm very sure that everyone has seen. about the way the water and the type of habitat and the conditions of the beaches so we will just um, compare these two and you need to summarize it in your head you need to uh, to start understanding about what am i saying you need to imagine it, imagine that situation and instance because imagining the situation and instance is just going to help your learning capacity to be increased so just think about this in this way now in desert we have sands i told it to you earlier but i'm repeating it anyway and in sea we have water so these two are way apart the way apart type of the diversity the way apart type of the surroundings so in the plants over here we found cactus now why cactus 
cactus i told you was a very thorny structure was very short was very small and was very fleshy but in the case of the plants found in sea we found sea weed and sea cucumber now we if uh, you have actually got a google and checked about sea weed it's going to be a very floaty structure that's very thin not like the one of the cactus so why this difference so this difference is basically just to understand about the the survival of these living organisms in the two different and drastic kind of surroundings the next one was about camels camel was the uh, organism was an animal that we found in the deserts and in seas we found a variety of fishes now there is main difference and major difference in the two types now we know that a camel has long legs has a very some a body has a hump on its back where water is stored for it so this long legs of the camel will help the camel to protect itself against the heat of the sand now since it's very hot in the desert regions it's going to be obvious that the sand is going to get heated up really fast so if you can't relate to this fact just try relating it to the point that uh, you might have not gone to beach at some point on in your life and while you might have had been on the beach you might have had observed that if it's a very sunny day the sand is going to be really hot it's going to be hot as in you you will not be able to keep your feet on the sand so just try to relate that but the density in deserts increases definitely so since the sands get really hot the camel has long legs and in this way the heat does not easily reach towards its, its body and that in this way it is able to help itself against the extreme temperatures also in a camel's bo uh, body the amount of water that is uh, taken in is usually less because a camel sweats really less and because it sweats really less the capacity of water it requires is also not much so supposedly if the sweating would be more in an organism the amount of water to refill the bo body water level would be important but in the case of camel since the sweating is itself less the whole thing whole process of needing water is reduced in the case of camel also we know that deserts are really windy and stormy and there is dry wind running throughout with sand particles in it so the camel has eyelids and has long lashes now these eyelids with long lashes and one more extra protective layer on the eye of camel is because to protect it from the dusty and the sandy storm that is usually found in the desert regions so these are some type of adaptations that are taken up by the camel to survive in that kind of area whereas we told about we told about the discussion of two drastic type of the environments so do you think that a camel could survive in the seas over here could a camel be able to adapt to the situations of seas and to the situation of water it would be very difficult for the camel to adapt because its body is not designed in a way to be adaptive to the sea so by this we will just understand a little bit more about why is it not why it can't so we we'll just understand that by the example of fishes so fishes we you know that they are thin they are uh, flat they're slender though there are various kind of fishes different shapes of fishes but we see certain things really common in them and these things that are really common in them are the wings the the fins these fins are the one that are helping the fish to swim in the water so the fish has a streamlined body now streamlined body is the one that start that tapers towards the end so that means the head and the tail of the fish is small compared to the mid body so that is a tapering structure or a streamlined structure so streamlined structure 
is the structure that is actually responsible for helping the fish to cut the currents and to move in the forward direction. Now we have learned about this in the body movements. So I am very sure that this must be really understandable about why, what is a streamlined body. Secondly, we observe that the scales on the fish's body. So uh, just if you have never observed a fish, go with your mother to the fish market and observe the structure of the fish. Observe how a fish is having those minute lines on the whole of its body. And these lines are very scaly, they are very uh, segmented. So why is it that? And these scaly lines are actually known as the scales or the, the skin on it. So this is actually very slippery and it's very slimy. That's because to maintain and regulate the fish's body's functions in sea. That's the main concern of it. Also, the fish, now you might be wondering that how does a fish breathe in the water? Staying on air, we can, we can uh, breathe and we can uh, perform the functions of breathing really easily. Let it be any animal from camel or a goat or a yak. But in seas, the fishes are underwater. So these fishes, they have gills with them. And these gills are present on the side of their, of their heads. So this gill will actually be helpful for the fish to take up the oxygen or to take up the air that is present in the water. Now since it takes up the air that is present in the water, it is able to breathe, it is able to respire and perform the various activities in the uh, life sustaining process in water. So in this way, we understood about the variety of the environment and we understood about the types of organisms in the environment. Now, we'll also understand that why can't these sustain on the various different type of situations. So just imagine that a camel is surviving in sea, is just drowned in sea and it's the, uh, you might be just thinking about the fact that does it stand a chance to survive in the seas? So the answer is definitely going to be no because the camel's body is not adapted in a way that it can adapt itself to the environment in the water. So because of this, what happens is that the camel will eventually drown and not be able to sustain its life in there. Because the camel does not have gills, the camel does not have fins, the camel does not have a scaly body because of which it could survive. But do you think a fish could survive on the, the floor or the desert or any other region? Definitely, the situation would be vice versa. Even the fish would not be able to survive in the desert region or on the land or dry region. So just for instance, when the fish is brought out of the water while the process of fishing, these fish, you can actually see the trembling movements of fish struggling to survive outside in the open, that is in the air. Though air has the, the oxygen present in it that is required for the fish to be respiring. But the fish is not able to do that. So in this way, we understand that every organism that is present has adapted to its surrounding. And because of this adaptation, it is able to carry out the processes to sustain life. Now, adaptation is actually not a very rapid process. Adaptation is a very slow process. It takes around thousands and millions of years for an organism to the environment that it is present at today. So for us humans also, we evolved over a very long period of time. And then finally, the result is today that we are surviving in the open taking up taking the air for our regular life performing functions then we also learned about the type of regions over here the first one was the forest the second one is the mountains the third one is the desert the fourth one is the sea and the fifth one would be any volcanic area or in any other area so these areas where organisms live and organisms adapt themselves 
is known as habitats. So habitats are nothing but the surroundings. Just let me now write that down for you. Habitats are nothing but just the surroundings. Surroundings where various type of micro or uh, the various type of microorganisms, let it be microorganisms or any other type of plant or object or animal survives. So it's basically the surrounding. And uh, as we could see over here in the table, there are various types of the environments and surroundings. And we saw that it has living organisms in it. Every kind of the environment or the habitat has the various type of living organisms in it and this is nothing but known as the habitat so i hope that you are clear with the meaning of habitat and adaptation so adaptation just to be a little bit more explaining explanative about it i will explain to you about this with the help of an example so what you have done is we know that biotechnology is a very rapidly growing field so in, the, in biotechnology, it is possible for a individual to make a plant and uh, to make it and to help overcome the crisis of the plants because this could help in protecting the extinct species or any other type of the plant uh, plant of plant species that have not been present lately and are in endangered category or also for the massive yield of crops so basically biotechnology has its applications in a very vast way in the the field of the plants so what example i'm going to be giving you is that a plant was synthetically developed by the process of biotechnology so after developing it now we know that this plant is very delicate it's very tender and it cannot be subjected directly out to the outside world. So what if it would be subjected directly to the outside world, it would get a shock and it would probably die at that point. So to prevent that and to prevent the loss or the wastage of the amount of efforts that were put in to make this plant, what is done is it is slowly, slowly and gradually exposed to the outer environment. So there's a place named greenhouse where the plant produced synthetically was taken out from the laboratory and gotten to the greenhouse. Now this greenhouse is going to be very humid and very hot and it will have a, a lot of uh, various type of plants and gases inside it trapped. And in this way the plant would be released in the greenhouse and slowly slowly it would start to adapt to its situation. To the situation and the surroundings around it. So this gradual adaptation of plant over the while would be known as acclimatization. Now if you didn't understand it with that, this example, I will give it um, a very basic example to you actually. So this example is uh, about a small child. Now a small child, when the child is just born, when you were just born, your parents didn't leave you immediately to walk. So you were growing as a year or two passed, your bones strengthened and you gradually started walking. So in this way, you were acclimatized, you were adapting to your body and finally when you were adapted to your body, you performed the function. But if you couldn't have had simply adapted to your body and you directly would have tried to stand up, your body was very tender to bear that type, type of stress and it would finally result in the breakdown or in a damage to the little baby or in that case as I explained to you. So that is why your parents were cautious and they took this process slowly. This was known as acclimatization. So let's just move with the further topic. So further we'll be understanding a little bit more about the type of habitats. 
Now, we understood from this table that there are various type of surroundings and uh, various type of habitats. But the type of habitats can be named in the terrestrial habitat. That is, let me write that down for you. Terrestrial habitat. And the second one is the aquatic habitat. Now the terrestrial habitat is going to be the habitat that would be found uh, on the land. So say the animals, the plants, the objects, the soil that is found on the land is known as the terrestrial habitat. So the type of the trees that are found that are like the, the pine trees as I mentioned to you over here. In the mountain area, the pine trees, the oak trees or the evergreen trees, these come under the terrestrial habitat. The type of animals like lion, tigers, foxes or jacks and goats are the type of animals that come in the terrestrial habitat. Also the animals and reptiles like snakes, like uh, the other kind of the animals or the insects let it be ants, let it be spiders or the various type of arthropods that are found on the land are known as the terrestrial habitat. So about from this we also understood that uh, the type of the aquatic habitats. Now in aquatic habitats we are going to have every other organism that is present in water. So in aquatic habitat over here in the sea that is we found that there were variety of fishes they range from jellyfish, starfish, sharks, whales so all these are the types of fishes that I was explaining about to the type of plants like the seaweed, the sea cucumber or the algae that grows on the banks of the rivers or uh, the various type of plants that are grown on the coral reef these are the aquatic habitats these components come in the aquatic habitat so simple as the name suggests terrestrial habitat means everything that is there on land and the aquatic habitat means everything that is there in the water so we will understand about the components of the habitats. We understood that a habitat is made up of living and non-living things right over here that I explained to you. I explained you over here about moist soil, about rocks. So we know that these are the non-living things but yet they are a part of the whole of the forest. They are present in forests that make up the whole forest. So over here in terrestrial and the aquatic habitats they both have certain living and non-living components to it. So the components that are living are known as the biotic components. The components that are living and are present in the in the surroundings or in the habitats like I mentioned over here, they will be the biotic components. I'll just write that down for you. The biotic components and followingly the non-living components or the non-living objects present on the surroundings inside the surroundings and on this planet are going to be abiotic components I'll write that down too for you the abiotic So we learned about two components that would be biotic and the abiotic components. Now from this table you help me guess out that what would be a biotic component and what would be a abiotic component. So let's just start from here. From any other type of surroundings. So in any other type of surrounding or place 
we found out that there were microorganisms. So, what do you think? Are they biotic factor or are they abiotic factor? You're right. That's the answer that microorganisms are the biotic factor since they are living organisms, living tiny little particles, the tiny little organisms. So in C, we learn about a variety of fishes that would be definitely a biotic component because it is living. About sea cucumber and seaweed, do you think plants are a biotic factor? Yes, they are a biotic factor because they also live and they also respire, they also produce food for themselves. So they are a biotic factor. But whereas coral reef, I told you, has rocks, has uh, the, the, the hot floor, has the soil structure to it. So do you think it's a biotic or an abiotic factor? Well, that depends, but mostly the coral reef is going to be uh, the abiotic, abiotic component. In the deserts, we learned about sand. Now, what is sand? Sand is going to be a biotic or abiotic component of the surrounding or the habitat that is present in the dry regions. What is it going to be? So the answer is going to be that it is a abiotic component of that habitat, of that surrounding. So this is going to be abiotic. The next is about cactus. Cactus is a biotic component. In the similar way, camel. Camel is a living organism, so it is a biotic component. So in this way, I think you have understood about the concept of biotic and abiotic components, but I'll yet repeat it for you. So biotic components are the ones that are living components, living things present in the surrounding. And surroundings, organisms with their surroundings are nothing but the habitats. So we learned that there are two types of habitats that are the terrestrial habitats and the aquatic habitats. Terrestrial habitat was the one that was found on the land. Every living or non-living thing or organism that is found on the land is the terrestrial habitat. While for the aquatic habitat, if the organisms or the objects that are found in the water are known as the aquatic habitat. Now let's shift to abiotic components. About abiotic components, we learned that these are the non-living components. So that are present in the uh, surroundings or the habitats. So in this way, we learned about what are abiotic and biotic components. And we learned about the terrestrial and the aquatic habitats. But it's not necessary that these are the only type, two type of habitats. So we will understand a little bit more about the type of habitats. But let's just start with the terrestrial habitat. 